Fox. Go down into the hands of Keith. And no, still open actually. I haven't seen him all serious long. It's only been one game, but almost forgot about him given the lack of priority last game. And this could be top lane Maokai. Uh, and it, yeah, it's going to yeah, be top lane Maokai. So uh, this is something that you can flex around. And Maokai is actually a pretty good matchup into the Gnar uh, because you can simply jump on this guy as he goes mini and you can actually mess him up pretty well in trades. That being said, it's a match that you have to play aggressively in Gnar which is pretty much every matchup to actually beat Gnar, you always have to fight into him. Of course, he can play very passively, he can just chunk you out, push you in, and that is why Gnar is such a strong laner. Uh, because if your jungler is kind of not there in your back pocket, uh, it can be pretty tough. And Dardoch going back to the Rengar, something that we haven't really seen much of at all lately. Uh, this is a pick that I think has kind of fallen to the wayside. Although with lethality, it can be quite powerful, and there certainly is that one-shot potential. Dardoch has had uh, quite the highlight reel of Rengar game in his career, so we'll see if he's looking for something here. I do like the flexibility Shieldsy are willing to show with the Maokai. Certainly, if you're going to play at jungle, you want to be able to flex at top as well. So, kind of matching a KD in there. We'll see if uh, these junglers can get off to an early start, but I think pretty stable team comes on both sides. Looper, no singed, unfortunately, for us, but Nas kind of one of, if not the best top lane pick right now. So, nice to see the team back in, but playing very stable stuff. Yeah, definitely so. I think that this is a game that Darshan can have some extremely efficient itemization against, though. Uh, auto attackers galore really across the board here. So, I mean, things like a Frozen Heart, a Bramble Vest, Ninja Tab Eyes are all extremely effective. So, uh, looking to see him go for those sorts of items very early on. And uh, we'll see if he does elect to do that. I always forget about Bramble Vest. <laughs> it's so good. It, like, there's not a lot of tanks top lane that are actually any good and that's I think partly why we're not seeing it as much because in jungle it doesn't make quite as much sense but uh, things like Cho'Gath and Maokai actually can be top lane tanks that are quite effective and when you are laning against auto attack heavy teams and auto attack heavy laners I think that Bramble Vest can be super super efficient like you can go uh, Tabby's and a Bramble Vest as your first items against someone like a Gnar and it can be actually super efficient but uh, there's always the worry of then getting preyed on by this Elise who obviously you're going to want some health in MR4. Well, aggressive level one for CLG, but don't find anyone to pick off. Stixay just going to dance in front as Looper gets a nice deep ward down towards the Raptor pit. He's going to get collapsed on here, though. As the Southern is going to chase him down. Looper going to be forced to flash here. Hops over the wall he's instead. Still on so him. skills up Hop, but who he still running around is Darshan. Also trying to he's cut like him off. Corral. I think he's dead. Yeah, Looper's just kind of trapped into the pit right now. Going to try and fight his way out, but I don't think he's going to get there. Probably holds on to the flash at this point, but. Sun's gonna come out in this first blood for who he. Oh, that's a brutal start for Looper. And he actually had to skill his jump level one. So uh, usually you're actually gonna get that level three, like in a lot of these lane matchups. So his lane is gonna be set back. Uh, he's actually dead at a pretty late time. He should be able to get the lane okay, but certainly can't leash. And it's gonna mean double Doran's ring start for who he. Yep. Actually already goes back, able to run back to the lane nice and quickly as a small leash there for Darshan, actually putting some saplings down on both the Raptor Brush and the Red Bush. Arcadian here getting help. Looks like a super leash maybe being lined up here for him as the bot lane might be rotating down to that right. Looks like that is the case here for Elise, so should see a lot of aggression. And we talked about it last game, the Doran's ring start for six day, right? So on the Jin, uh, to Bowser's getting these last hits, uh, being able to kind of keep that mana up and, and just lane with the additional spells uh, that you are going to be able to kind of throw out there. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, he is going to be going with MR blues, though, not going AP blues or anything like that. So more of a defensive option. And I think that makes a lot of a sense, especially against Elise and, and Corky, who can burst you out pretty heavily. Uh, if you're not going to build any MR normally in your build early on, then having at least a bit of that uh, from your runes is pretty powerful. Yeah, we'll see where Akkadian does go there. Let's just cut off right now. Should be level three as this is done and does ding it, but Dardog over to that top side, able to sneak in with not too much health, but knows that Looper's pretty vulnerable right now. It's a pretty hard gank to make happen. I think it's more looking for a counter gank, but uh, Keith taking a lot of damage down there. That was a great CC chain there from CLD's dual land as Dardog leaps in onto Looper. Not gonna tie him up, that level one E helping him out there, but gonna have to TP back to lane like as Akkadian does dip down to the bottom side, but he's also CC'd up. Yeah, and I mean, the wave is actually in a really bad spot for Looper, so he has to immediately TP back. Uh, and this is actually the level one uh, first blood, so quite a while ago, uh, but this was the kill over on Looper. He skilled up the jump, but uh, CLG just did a good job corralling him, kind of moving to all sides, so where are you gonna go, right? Like, even if you flash out, you're dead here, so he makes, I think, the smart choice and just kind of gives up his life. May as well just take that and 
who he able to grab first blood was definitely a nice start there for CLG. Yep. Kind of the only other optimization maybe is like giving the kill to someone else, but that's really hard to orchestrate. It looks like continued aggression for Fox. I think they stole the blue buff actually. CLG yeah. not able to collapse in time. I mean, Dardock didn't take his blue and, and gank top, so that's something that you should be able to actually punish, and they do take away that blue buff. Uh, but as I was saying before we went into that replay, uh, Looper had the lane in a tough spot, which means he has to immediately TP back, or it was actually going to be frozen on him. Uh, that being said, Darshan then, I think, maybe tried to hold the wave too much, group too many minions, so when it actually got shoved in by Looper, he gets chunked out very heavily, and he, he really didn't pick up a farm advantage off that at all, because he wasn't able to see us much of that, uh, that mini wave whatsoever. Yeah, and you can see Darshan now going to be forced to TP back. Looper actually harassing very well. Mm -hmm. In that 1v1, Starshan's going to TP back and keep that CS even. But for all the trouble that Looper suffered at level 1, doing okay right now in the 1v1, I think maybe mid lane is where the advantage could bleed out, but Froggen, despite his opponent having a second early uh, early second Dorans, is keeping that farm nice and even, which is kind of what Corky wants in every single lane. Yeah, Darshan kind of overusing the Corrupting Potion, honestly. He popped two charges immediately when we got back to lane, so uh, that buy is almost like null and void, right? That, that's... He just went back and his first buy didn't really get him much of anything. Like that's gone within a couple seconds pretty much of him getting to lane. So uh, that is kind of a pretty high cost uh, to that early trade. And you have to be careful about when you are going for the trades. So you want to keep your mana up so you can continually go for them. But if you go too far, you can take too much damage on the return. Looper a little low on health, but should be just fine here. Does wall up Darshan in the wave and get some damage back down. Crunch actually does a nice chunk of damage to a tank. Kadeen is in the area, but I think I spotted Dardock on his Raptors earlier, so Dardock farming away right now. Good vision there from Fox, as you can see that ward just over the side, but can uh, kind of back off there for Luke. Looks like just take a recall. And it can definitely be tough to actually fight into the Meganar uh, on Maokai. You, it's really about trading when he's not in Mega. When he, right when he comes out of Mega, you try to jump into him. And like one of the tricks that you can kind of do uh, that I don't see a lot of pro players actually playing around in the top lane is, so your Q is essentially a knockback, right? The saplings do massively more damage if you have them in the brush. So you should be trying to throw a sapling into the brush and punch your opponent towards that to actually trigger the sapling. If you can pull that off, uh, it's something that really increases the damage from your trade. Uh, one of those saplings hitting can be pretty devastating for a laning phase. Yep. I think one of those things where Malco did receive so many changes it's like feeling relatively similar as the champion that players now with him finally getting some play in pro kind of learning a lot of those intricacies especially if you have to flex the champion mm -hmm. you maybe can think you'll play that maybe less than half of the time you would have put with a, a main world champ as CLG with a nice little play. And, and it's one of those things where honestly I, I feel like very few of the top laners will have been practicing Maokai because like well I've played a thousand yeah. games of Maokai in my life He's a simple champion. I don't need to practice it. But uh, little things like that can make a pretty big difference. Obviously, not in all cases. As, I mean, in this case, Looper's playing on the bottom side of the lane anyway, so you wouldn't be able to do anything with that regardless. But there are little kind of tricks uh, that can be pretty effective and uh, little combos that you don't see people actually always utilizing that well uh, because they're not that experienced, I think, on the champion. And that's something that I think we'll see uh, kind of change over time. Uh, there's things where you can kind of even like almost like alley-oop yourself with the ultimate where you throw out the ultimate very early and then you're able to flash forward, root them, and then punch them. And if you can get these max range ultimates that you CC them so they can't move until it arrives, it lasts so much longer. Because at point blank, it's like 0.4 seconds. At max range, it's 2.4 seconds or around that. So uh, if you can actually set yourself up for that, it's pretty powerful. I mean, I'm here for all these optimizations personally, so... <laughs> Enjoying the tip and tricks, Darshan. Trying to trade, but Looper being very elusive with double Doran's Blade, actually. Really trying to leverage an early lane advantage. Frog in level 7, so able to fire some missiles out and help way clear, but early buys have come from the mid lane, and it's just been a farm fest so far. And he has to actually be pretty careful. Like, you know, it's, it's not just about bowling lane, it's about surviving. Getting that early extra HP and stuff, because uh, Maokai can mess up Anar. As long as you don't run out of mana, uh, you can keep jumping forward and going on these on these attacks. And I think that's why it's a pretty smart build from Darshan as far as going for the Doran's Ring and grabbing uh, the Scrupting Potion because that gives him actually a lot of mana. You can spend that out, then base up and, and look to make these plays. But Aphromu and Dardok but up here on the top side. Elise is here as well though. This could get turned around. Already going, but Darshan has the ultimate rip, does root up too. Stardock pops the ultimate, but Akkadian, great counter gank there, just making sure no dive happens. Yeah, that's actually a pretty expensive gank there from Dardock because, I mean, popping the ultimate, uh, that rank one ultimate is actually quite a long cooldown there for him, you know, over two minutes, and he has no CDR actually purchased yet, so uh, it's 
pretty nice pathing from Acadian. Shut that down with no real problems. Yep. Tarshan also used his ult, so that setup won't be there for a while. And that from me. He didn't lose too much on the bot side. 6A able to return and play safe, because it looks like both supports are roaming, but definitely a lot invested and no return there for CLG. So they'll hold their lead here in eight and a half minutes, about a thousand gold ahead. But certainly not snowballing nearly as out of control as game number one. No, certainly not. But at the same time, you know, Kadian is playing kind of what I would call the more early game jungler, and he has not really gotten anything done either. Besides, you know, he did he did have a nice counter gank there, but he's a Moby Boots Elise, and we're at nine minutes, and he has not really ganked yet, right? And that's not a situation you want to be in. You do not want to be Moby Boots Elise, just kind of farming around the map. You want to be moving around, ganking, putting on pressure nonstop. Oh, oh my god. Oh, sick say. <laughs> so well timed. <laughs> that was pretty sick, but... Uh, Do they even have vision there? They what? had a ward uh, you know, on the entrance, so they knew they were doing it, but I think the timing was just a total guess. Well, good guess from Stixay. Gets himself a blue buff. It's gonna feel great there as Jin in the bot lane. Tonight from Froggen, who did have the package and was looking to make some sort of roam into the jungle. Megana from Looper. Gonna move Dasha into the wall, but who? He's here for a surprise. Knocks him back into it, but the minefield not that damage, so might still be enough as Looper falls to flash Dasha. Immunes himself out of the turret. Now who? He's gonna finish the job. Nice dive there. A little bit uh, out of sorts from CLG, but they do pull it off. and. Getting the kill onto Looper, they get the flash from him as well. Just cost the one flash there from Darshan. So really good roam up by Huhi. And getting Darshan ahead on this Maokai is going to be really big. Yeah, already has a pretty good CS lead. So Looper going to lose a ton more to the turret before he's able to TP there. Echo Fox with three people in this brush here with Frogan also roaming down. So some four-man play being developed. But CLG now going to spot them all. Dardock flashes that from under Acadian's Cocoon. Ulti though, he's gonna hit onto Afro move it. Now Stixay gonna counter kill. Great ulti there from Bard. Gonna tie them all up. Waits out the duration. And Stixay puts a few more bullets in. And now Darshan TP in with the ultimate ticking away. Looper hit with oh, a Q4. Darshan gets everybody else's Darshan leaps in a key. Just explodes. Looper gonna go down next. There's the third kill. Afro able to get the kill in onto the Nath. Darshan slays gate. Rappel goes down. And Acadian oh, goes down no. also. It's a massacre in the bot lane. As CLG get everyone, Darshan, so much faster on that TP, gets all four with his ultimate, and that was that. I mean, uh, this game is almost, like, done. This is 11 minutes in. They're going to be up almost 6,000 gold and get a turret. Like, they're going to get the turret and the dragon. Like, this is insane. 5,000 gold to lead. Yep, first turret pushes that gold up to f uh, lead up to 5k as, uh, let's watch this again. Yeah, and Darshan's so much faster, and this is a mini NAR TPing in. I mean, the TP is already completed as Looper starts his TP. And look at this all from Darshan. He knows that's the only way they can get out. Corrals all four in, locks up the AD carry. Keith gets knocked in, easily cleaned up. And the AoE coming in from Dardock there, just crushing them. And remember, Akkadian spent his flash to try to catch out Dardock in the jungle, so no way out for him either. And that is just brutal. Uh, yeah. Poor Echo Fox. He's going to casually solo that Ocean Drake, giving CLG another advantage there. And now the standard Grum to the top side as Stixay has a Dust Blade finished. Yeah, he has a Dust Blade finished. I mean, look at the amount of damage coming out from these guys in the team fight. Uh, just able to kind of group them up and, and crush them down. A CLG have got to be feeling so good about that early play. They were already winning across the map, and now Echo Fox are just in a dire position. They're going to have to slow down this game so much to really be able to get anything done. And even then, you're gonna be facing, you know, kind of outscaling, I'd say probably in the top lane and the jungle, and uh, it's really rough. I think CLG have demonstrated this consistently, but even as early as last game, that they're a team that when they get an advantage, they know exactly what to do as far as snowball goes. This should be very straightforward for them. And I mean, one of the biggest problems is not even just the gold, it's the experience. Look across the board, level up in top lane, two levels up in the jungle, even in the mid lane, two levels up on both AD carry and support in the bot lane. Like that is an insane advantage in experience that isn't even shown in the gold lead. So not only are they ridiculously behind as far as the itemization goes, the actually base stats on the characters are so much lower as well and Froggen, Maybe getting caught out, but looks like he will get away. This is going to be another turret, though. This is three turrets so quickly for yeah, CLG. Six, they already took the top outer. CLG working on the mid here, and they should break this line very swiftly. Dardock and Stixxay still lining up a potential dive. Froggen cannot play too aggressive here, which means he can't clear waves. Turret goes down, and CLG continuing to grow that gold lead. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? There's, there's no real answer there for Froggen. At least Echo Fox able to trade back a turret on the bot side, but uh, not able to farm all the lanes, and, and thus going to kind of fall more behind in, in that experience. So 
Uh, we'll see what happens here for them. It really is going to come down to uh, can Echo Fox, you know, find either a miracle pick or or slow down the game to a point where Looper can maybe take over in a side lane or, or something. Like you're really kind of stretching to find a way that uh, Echo Fox now gets back in this game and, and has a chance at winning it because CLG has such an explosive lead and, and such a powerful composition. Well, I think it's time to talk about exactly how far ahead CLG are. Then. I mean, we can see the total gold lead, but it looks like Huki going to go back and spend some money. Sticks, they already has his zeal. So building in towards what I assume is a rapid fire cannon to kind of complement that yeah. dust blade. And as far as their next play goes, I mean, there's not a Drake to take for a little while, but Rift Charge's very much still available and should be more than open to CLG. Yeah, so CLG really want to extend their advantage now. You know, it's not about just sitting on this 5k gold lead. And the way that they do that is by pushing up vision. You get vision in your opponent's jungle. You move around the map and you start farming both sides. If you can actually accomplish that, if you can start to shut Acadian out of his own jungle and really just extend the farm lead, there's, oh my god, that damage. Just like that. Here Ouch. we go. Rengar and Bud team up. The unlikely duo able to slay the very squishy Elise. Yeah, I mean, Darlock is just so strong right now. Uh, with the early lethality and the completed warrior, he still has his ultimate available here. And they could be looking for Froggen. Uh, we'll see if they go for this play. Afro has the ulti. It's like the true support didn't even hit those CSs are under the turret. <laughs> Who he zoned himself out, had to cancel his own wall. Yeah, he may be caught out now, though. He's down to Dardock as he's continuing to pick up stacks of that the ulti. And creeping death does shot. He'll lock up Froggen to try and knock him back into the brambles, but not quite there. But still, doesn't matter. Afro disables the tower. Dardock picks up the double kill. A trade goes over as Bard will fall, but Keith's gonna die to who he. So well played by CLG. Yeah, Darshan almost setting up that alley oop. Not quite able to get it, but they get three kills there. They're gonna knock down another turret, and Echo Fox are not putting up much of a resistance here. Looper, no reason for him to base because he can't do anything about it. So he's gonna try to get some damage down on this side lane turret and maybe able to knock that down, but it's a very small victory uh, compared to what CLG is getting. Uh, this lead is just insane. Yep, continuing to be extended, which is exactly what we wanted to see from CLG. Looper will take this turret. Gold lead stands at 6,000 up still for CLG. And uh, well, Dardock has a big bard a portal. Dusk blade. That is, after me, definitely knowing the little meticulous things about the champion, but Looper should be safe at this time around. Going to steal that blast coat. Nope, just chills out. As it watches again, I mean, Acadian just face checks here in the wrong time. And uh, Huhi comes surfing in with the wall, unfortunately locks himself out of it, and is having to cancel it to go over. But, I mean, CLG is so strong, you can just force plays, right? You can you can constantly, it looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I you, realize you, what happened. you can constantly force these plays on your opponent, because as long as it's an even fight, there's nothing they can really do. And almost getting that max range ultimate, if he aimed it a little bit back towards the turret, I probably would have gotten that extra brute, but it didn't really matter. Very nice flank from Darshan, who's been playing so well this series. I mean, his TP on the bot side in the ultimate is really what blew this game wide open. Uh, was able to kind of extend that massive advantage for CLG, and now they are taking full control over the jungle. Pink Ward's over on this side. Uh, Echo Fox has snuck up here, though, and Six Day could get surprised. I mean, he's not going to be thinking two men are in this bush when they have that much control and just took away the blue buff. Plays with respect, though, as CLG actually mm -hmm. backing off towards the Rift Herald. Should be uh, uncontested at this point, given that Echo Fox is still so far behind. Look where Darshan is. He's actually like setting up for a flank, but his team is on the Rift Herald. Uh, he's he's actually the using the bush con. with the saplings. If someone face checks him there, uh, he could actually burst them down. And now looking for the pick onto Keith. Keith has no flash. Does have a heal, but there's the ulti back in. Knocks him in. Knock back. That is disgusting, <laughs> Darshan. Taking down Keith. <laughs> nice little flank there from Darshan. And now with the Rift Herald, honestly, and this big of a lead, you could look to crack the inhibitor with it straight up. You could just walk up to inhibitor and threaten to go for that. Uh, CLG may want to collect the easier gold and just grab it on the outside. Uh, make sure that they're taking every guaranteed event before they take any risks. But, I mean, this gold lead is so enormous and they're so strong that they really could look to try to press and close this game out very, very quickly. Well. Front six here again, moving through. Five portal creates a ton of mobility for your team. So Silgy's normally crispy rotations are going to feel that much faster in this particular game. And Dardock is also insanely strong. He's just hanging out, hoping 
There is an award in that brush, unfortunately for him. There is, but TLG going to press through the jungle and try and pick somebody off. I mean, this is an opportunity for Echo Fox, though, right? If, if, if you have them on a ward and they do not know, you can go for a play. And we're going to see Akkadian uh, look for that over the wall. We'll see if they can make anything happen. Kept rooming in. Lupo ready for the big... No! Doesn't get after, but he will get Dardock. Dardock able to get shot down by the time catch. Nice little play from Echo Fox. Yeah, good play from them there. They realize they have Dardock on a ward. He does not know about it, so... You know, yes, it's a pretty big commitment. It's a couple ultimates coming in, but that's what you need to do. You need to get picks like that that delay the game, that allow you to farm up and control your side of the map. Well, could maybe blame Dada for trinketing, but he had a different trinket. <laughs> a little Rift Tower trinket there. Unfortunately, not able to sweep that brush, so going to delay that play for a little while longer. So like Drake there over to CLG, Ocean number two. We'll go over to them and Echo Fox. They have to take gold where they can get it, but... Still in no position to really fight CLG straight up for a long time in this game. As who he might have found a catch loop, he's gonna leap out of the way. Josh Young was on another flank potential, but loop able to get out safely back towards his team, and we'll see where CLG look to attack next. Remember, Roof Child's still available for a couple of minutes, but we'll be running out relatively soon, I think. Yeah, and that that's really the question is is where do they actually attack next, right? Uh, he has you know about a minute 45 something like that on the Rift Herald, so still a fair bit of time. Uh, they could look for that play where you drop in one lane and then pressure Baron as a spawn because they're enough ahead for that. They also could just use it to secure some of the outer turrets, uh, pick up some more guaranteed global gold. Uh, so there certainly are a lot of options. It just kind of depends what they want to go for as far as risk versus reward because they don't have to take any risky options. Uh, but certainly can look to do so and close up the game if they're feeling confident. I actually just remembered how it does play passive work. So I must have been on cooldown then cool in that brush. Okay, yep. well, that, that's the other thing. He's probably thinking to himself, oh, I'm totally safe here, but Dustblade's on cooldown. Unfortunately for you, not going to spot that ward. But that is definitely one of the elements of Dustblade that I think we don't talk about that much, but is insanely powerful. Yeah, it really is. For those who may not know, it's actually essentially the old Oracle's Elixir, which will proc uh, the sweeper when you do actually step on a ward so you know if you have been spotted and then you can actually clear those wards out it's very powerful for these assassins because you can simply move through it if you never see a proc you know you never pass the ward and you can look for these free ganks that's one of the reasons i think it's even stronger on junglers and so strong for vision control as well and we may actually see this this baron play uh Dardoch is over by the top side he could drop that rift herald and then go straight to baron but not sure what they want to do with it just yet i mean they have to drop the herald very soon and they are standing by that Baron pit. Yeah, kind of in position there in the tri bush before, but walking back towards Baron right now. I hope he hasn't forgotten about it. Looks like he's claiming a ward instead. Dustblade gonna proc it. We'll yeah. Sweep that one I out think that's what him. they're trying to set up. I mean, but. he just checked the Baron pit again. Yep. They're gonna drop it and they're gonna go to Baron, uh, I do believe. We'll see if they actually do decide to commit for that. They could just go straight for the turret as well and try to press very heavily. Uh, who he's shoving in mid lane right now and they knock down that blast outer and now pinging towards Baron. So the idea is you create all this additional pressure with the Rift Herald, and while they're answering it, you're actually killing Baron. Yep, I've got Talia Wall as well, so he's also able to cut off Fox as they come in to try and contest it here. A big wave building on the bot side, Darshan's gonna go and catch it, and that seems to be delaying CLG, who will not rush onto the Baron. Yeah, I guess they, they just decided they don't actually want to risk it, uh, but they kind of lose the coin flip there, because Echo Fox wasn't even moving towards the Baron. They weren't even looking to check it, and they actually had no blue trinket available. So Echo Fox wouldn't have really uh, been able to do anything about that Baron had CLG started it immediately. But either way, they're going to send Darshan back. They don't want to risk any bad fight. And I mean, if you get aced in the Baron pit and they get Baron, then Echo Fox is back in the game. So it certainly makes sense. Uh, they want to go for a guaranteed pick or a straight up 5v5 uh, where they know they will have a massive advantage. Darshan just quickly reversing that bot side wave. That a big wave building for CLG in the top half as Fox trying to retake priority of the mid lane. but. CLG still with so much control, and again, Fox is so far behind, I have to play reactively. And you can see Dardoch just farming Acadian's jungle, uh, putting the priority on that. If anyone actually checks through this, he could look for a play, and they're going for it now. Oh my god, oh Acadian blown god. up by the Rengar Looper. Gonna get snared up as well as Dardoch leaps back in onto a mini. Now it's so squishy as Stixie, looking for the tag, does not land it, hits Keith for the next few. Last bullet gonna go blind. Oh, she does get one. <laughs> And Might now they, can, they can definitely do the Baron. I mean, after the jungler just got one shot, who he actually chasing after Gate gates there? Out, he. Uh, gates out, but the Baron's gone. And, and CLG, they get what they came for here. Darlock just waiting, setting up a very nice pick in the jungle. Uh, he, they push out the wave. He farms the jungle. They know they have vision control. So Looper and Acadian just kind of wandering through the jungle to actually respond to that wave. Get insta-killed there by Dardock. 
who's now on three items. Yep, double lethality, warrior. Brown boots, because doesn't really need them. They don't do too much damage. So <laughs> if they had lethality, he'd be equipping them instantly. But I mean, Acadian suffered before with a face check. This is just that disgusting. Is, that damage. is insane. That wasn't even the ultimate for the actual crit auto there. He just jumps straight out of the bush, then pops the ultimate afterwards. Uh, they can go straight back to the Baron. I mean, this is Acadian on one item in pieces uh, versus three completed items for Dardoch. So he is just hilariously ahead. And really, that's the story across the board. You see Keith working towards a Rage Blade uh, while, you know, Stixie already has two items and is closing in on the IE. Uh, everyone on CLG is just so much stronger uh, that this game could be closed out probably even faster than the last one, which was 28 minutes. And the next Drake is Infernal. It looks like the play is set up. Ult's going to miss that from Afro, but he's going to keep moving in. Dardoch looking for a pick. Stone's not going to latch there off the gate, but Dardoch just leaps on as a good devour from Gates going to protect his carry. Looper takes out Afro, but Dardoch annihilates the Gnar. And now the ult here from Maka is going to find Gate. Rooted up by Stix as the play continues. Tower dive now imminent as CLG. Luke can try and get a few more kills. Gate is low as Darshan's tanking that turret. But Fox is just running back the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, what else What else can they do? They just have to retreat here, but Akadian could sneak up on 6A from behind with the Elise. We'll see if he can actually catch him. He actually dodges out of Cocoon. 6A with a really nice play as he puts the trap back down, but he's cut off. Dardoch able to get keep up. Frog, and I believe, yes, did pick up the kill on the 6A. Who he, though, cleans up the rest of the fight, and CLG just too far ahead as who he rides the wall to cut off Akadian. He's going to flat out and try and buy a little bit more time. Dardoch taking the top for as long as he can, but those last few shots, able to get it. Who he grabbing the ace for CLG. Five for three there for CLG as they pick up the ace pretty sloppy dive and engage honestly by them but they're so far ahead it does not matter they're able to execute anyway they get the last outer turret here and they are so strong uh, echo fox doing the best with what they have yep though. and credit to them certainly for fighting here but clg gonna grab this inferno they're ten thousand gold ahead mm -hmm. and unfortunately baron's gonna wear off pretty much because and they also lost it on three so that push itself will kind of die down but CLG far enough ahead, they should be able to just brute force down these inhibs. And they do have enough time to actually go for one more push on the Baron. You know, about one third of that buff remains on, on both Huhi and Dardoch. So they can go back, they can buy, they can go once again here in Afro uh, with less than ideal engage. Whip on the Bardol, portals in, looks for the flash route, does not get that either, but they're so strong, forced to play anyway. Looper just getting focused down, dies almost instantly, and then. Uh, Darshan, another good ultimate here, wrapping up multiple people. Uh, but Echo Fox did a really good job kiting back through the turret, playing this kind of split game. And uh, CLG takes so much damage from the turret. And then Stixa setting up the ultimate, he's getting flanked by Acadian. So they're able to at least trade back some kills. And I think that Echo Fox played it very, very well uh, to at least get that. Well, play extends. CLG eventually able to clean it all up. Yeah. Like you said, very sloppy there from CLG, but... But they got it. I mean, yep. they, they get the kills, and it, it does end up working out. Uh, and they're confident enough that they can force these kind of plays because of their gold lead. It's not a play that you would, I think, see them committing to uh, in a normal game. You know, after the Bard ultimate misses, generally you'll just back off. But in this case, they felt strong enough that they can just make it happen anyway. So now, setting up 1-3-1, looking to push in the side lanes, and then perhaps just group 5 middle and actually force that down or, or see kind of where the chink in the armor is for Echo Fox. Well, it looks like everything being set up once more. Baron has dropped off, but not a huge loss there for CLG, who have more than enough items to try and close out this game. 6A did finish his IE. Dardak has a BF sword, probably going into a GA. So full damage Assassin Rengar is uh, arrived, actually. I was going to say incoming, but certainly already here when you look at how squishy a lot of the members of Echo Fox are. Even Looper in mini form is uh, prey for this Rengar. Yeah, I mean, Lo Looper did not go for a Frozen Mallet, which I think is pretty intelligent. He's trying to just get up his tanky stats as fast as possible, Akkadian as well, bailing out on the damage build, going for the Locket. Like, these are smart choices, uh, but they're just so behind in gold that it doesn't really matter uh, unless they can kind of hold for a long time. And Darshan now starts up the ultimate, uh, throwing them off the turret. I love this combo. They're just going to knock down the turret. Well, it looks like Double Root actually going to land in. Turret should fall. Great shot back there onto Akkadian by Huhi, but turret... He's going to go down. Frog with the short range cork. He can't get in. And Dardoch leaps in to try and get a kill. Good devour there from Gate as Keith is forced to flash. 6A cover fire there with the ultimate. Almost takes down Gate with that last crit bullet, but damage is done. Inhib goes down. Yeah, really well done there from CLG. Dardoch and Darshan easily able to kind of just run in, use that Maokai ultimate to actually zone them off the turret. Very, very powerful as a sieging tool. Knock down the second inhibitor turret and. Uh, they can even continue to fight if They're they want. They're going for it. Looper actually locked up. Oh, that's Darshan going golden. 
Alongside Looper, Latch isn't going to quite land, but the shove is good from Huhi, but not enough damage to actually kill Looper. Fox still five alive as they look to defend, but Dashan leaps in off the frog and roots him up. The W is going to connect as Gate goes down to Dardoch. Ash from him with yet another kill, his fourth of this game. And Keith and the Kadian too low to defend top and hit falls as well. Minions are going to be pushing in mid. They can continue to shove this up. Super Minion has arrived, and I think a CLG looking for another sub-30 win here. And look at make it 2-0 over Aquafox. Yep. Six haters reloading, gonna start shooting down these turrets. Left one falls. And Looper going mega might need to make a heroic ultimate here. Look to save it up, but he's just getting locked up. Dardoch just assassinates Keith as he dives into the back line. Gets a double kill as he slays Meganar. Just so strong on this Rangar. And the Nexus open. CLG will take it in barely under 30 minutes. The speedrun is complete. CLG with the sweep. Yeah, less than an hour of total gameplay to win this series for CLG. They made it look very easy. This one even more dominant than game number one. A lot of credit deserved, I think, by uh, the whole CLG squad, but Darshan, I think, played exceptionally well in both games. Uh, the first game, surviving all the pressure, being able to absorb that and still have success later in the game. And in this game, it was his TP bot lane that really did turn the tide. The four-man Maokai ultimate wrapping them up and getting them a near ace very early on in the game. Just gonna have a like, look in as the teams are gonna shake hands. So, so much work being done in general by Steel do this game. And I think uh, still very early to chart exactly how this will fall out, but early impressions seem to be that Maokai is looking good. I do not think he has lost the game yet this weekend. Yeah, Maokai is really good, I would, I would certainly say. I think that Echo Fox, uh, maybe back to drawing board a little bit for them. This is, I believe, their fourth straight series loss in a row. Uh, they are definitely struggling uh, and are facing that prospect of the promo relegation tournament once again. Yep, certainly a rough outlook there for Fox, but CLG again trying to break. Still the three-way tie there in the top of the standings. Have a very tough match tomorrow against Immortals, which will kind of really break that tie open, but winning here certainly keeps them ahead. And if Immortals slip up, or TSM slip up as well, they are playing Dig today. Yeah, and I mean, TSM playing Dig Toss uh, on, on the other stream right now. So, you know, the result of that series could actually push them right into first place, right? If TSM loses, a CLG does get a game up on them because those three teams are all sitting at nine and three right now. We'll have a look at some of the moments in that game. You mentioned already Darshan's TP leading into a very effective looking ulti. We'll replay that ace in the bot lane in just a moment. Here we go. Ah, oh, it's this way instead. Uh, and I mean, this is CLG just kind of looking to really force down and close out this game. Uh, they're so far ahead. Afro whipping the ulti, whipping the bard stun, but it just really doesn't matter. Uh, you can see how quickly Dardock and Six Day actually shred through uh, that top lane tank on the Gnar, and they're able to just essentially dive behind multiple turrets because they're so far ahead. They know they can go for these sorts of plays, and uh, this did allow them to eventually chase down a couple kills and, and really look to close out the game quickly. Ah, uh, yes. Now I remember this play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this this is what... That's a really nice repel, actually, with Bikini, by yep. the way. Yep, six they flash in as well. I was like, I'm going! Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of an oopsie, but... I mean, this this is the kind of series that CLG wanted, right? They, they wanted to actually not just win this series, they wanted to dominate this series. They're competing for the top spot. This is a team that you should, by the end of the split, be able to dominate, right? Like, we're not in the early stages. This is getting towards your playoff form, and you need to be able to crush the bottom tier teams if you want to be a legitimate championship threat, right? And I think, yeah, and I think across the board, just a really good performance there from CLG. But for more on that 2-0 victory, let's check in with Digon and CLG's jungler. Thank you very much, Pastry Cake. Great cast on the day. I'm joined by Dardock. Now tell me, you guys just took down Echo Fox, who has a 10-man roster themselves. What's it been like going from the young gun, the ace, now to being kind of a, bit, a mentor for your substitute? Um, it was a bit of a like a like a shock at first because I wasn't used to watching others like watching someone play with my team in uh, in place of me, but. Uh, I just had to take take it in stride with the right mentality, and I'm just uh, trying to improve as much as I can, as well as helping him improve. So a good way to improve is to be on top of this new patch. There's a lot of crazy things here. Tanks, assassins, what is your take on the jungle in this new 714 patch? Uh, overall, there's a lot of, uh, not a lot of variety. You either pick Cho'Gath or Maokai, or if they're banned, you pick, uh, then it opens up. Or you can pick things like Rengar, Elise. You can play Kane. Kha'Zix is pretty good. Uh, I even got Lee Sin a few times. 
But uh, just in general, I think the tanks are a bit overtuned and they're a bit too easy to play. So I don't like that that much. But if it lets me play Rengar, why not? <laughs> Well, looking a little bit further ahead, you've got your game against Immortals. There's a top three cluster there. Uh, how do you expect to break through that with TSM and Immortals, starting with Immortals next uh, tomorrow? We're just going to beat them. Well, how are you going to beat them? Don't, don't give me just that. Come on, give, give a little bit more. Um, well, my view is that they're, uh, Immortals and TSM are very strong teams, uh, but I just think we're better. We're just going to beat them because we're the better team. <laughs> All right, so strong words come from you. Thank you very much, Dardoch. We're going to send it on over to Dash and the analyst desk without a desk for more information. <laughs> <laughs> we agreed on the dojo. Still without a desk, Degon. All right, yeah, the dojo. I really like that. That yeah. was uh, that was thought off while I wasn't here, but I will use it. Uh, CLG, man. Oh, yeah. 2-0 victory. Easy peasy. I mean, you heard Dardoch there. He's confident about their games against Immortals and TSM still to come. And here they are, you know, putting their money where their mouth is in terms of closing out a series very quickly against Echo Fox. Right. I mean, he has a reason to be confident. I, I think like they, they showed that they understand the new meta. If you're watching some of the other teams and streams that have been going on this weekend so far, some people are still on the back foot picking things that were really strong in 713, not necessarily mm -hmm. completely understanding how to use the stuff on 714. And here we see the Rengar and the Maokai comboing together to make, uh, you know, uh, some room for the the uh, Rengar, who's pretty snowball-y and a little weak early game, to have some front line to protect it. And, and this isn't surprising, though, coming from CLG. This is an organization that in the past has been one of the quicker to adapt to metas as well as come up with very interesting level ones, uses for champions as they find their way into the meta. And I do like that we got two different looks today. We had the tank jungler and the aggressive Rengar jungler out of Dardoch. So again, CLG saying... We recognize that lethality can be strong. We recognize that tanks can be strong. Let's find a way to make them both useful. I was actually surprised in game one when they had the Maokai in the jungle. We didn't see one of those crazy start with your saplings on the other side of the map and get right. an extra camp uh, leashed from your bot lane. That was something that we saw in Europe a little bit. Pretty cheeky. And, yeah, it's pretty cheeky. And like you said, it's it's something that CLG being very innovative often with their level ones and their champions, you would have thought they would have picked it up. But, right. but, but who knows? I mean, it's still pretty good to see them already flexing the Maokai between the top two. They were mm -hmm. doing it a lot earlier in the season with the Gragas pick. And Maokai currently is just an improved tank to do it with. Now, again, because this game was so dominant and so dominant from so early, there's only so much we can analyze, you know, from a gameplay perspective. The one clip we yeah. want to bring up is 10-10 into the game. CLG picks up a 4 for 0 in the bot lane. This is after that weird first blood handed over by Looper off of the invade for the ward. But essentially, so much gold going into the coffers of CLG as a result of this play gives them all of the control they need for the remainder of the game. Yep, and you see this, they had that little buffer in the early game. Uh, they hadn't been able to make a big play yet, but here Darshan comes in with his TP flank, drops the ultimate down oh, their escape path. Such it. a pretty ultimate. They want to get out to the left. They can't. It's all blocked up lands. The three-man route buys enough time for Dardoch to get close to the fight. Also gets the three-man punch back with the Q, and then Dardoch finally, when that exhaust wears off, jumps in, starts cleaning up the kills, and then it's kind of off to the races for Rengar. <laughs> he gets the double. And you give him a double kill, that cat's gonna kill a lot of people. Right, more and more we're seeing the power of that Maokai pick, right? Off of TP's, his ability to flank position, lock down targets, and make sure that they get zeroed out to give his team advantages. Darshan playing very well throughout this game, gonna pick up player of the game for his team. So again, uh, the series for him today, massive. Yeah, we had both player of the games. Obviously, two different looks a little bit with the, the Jarvan in the last game. A little bit more aggressive, bully-oriented, built yeah. some damage. This time on the Maokai, they flex it to him. He's able to execute on it. And while, you know, Dardoch has a monster performance as well, it is off the back of that huge replay that we just showed. And then any Rengar that gets those kind of advantages in the early game is going to be able to start popping off. And right. He, he had a great game out of Dardoch as well, but... Darshan was the big setup. Yeah, I mean, Darshan's scoreline looks great, but something we didn't get to break down game one of the series, but something that we had talked about very early on in that game one, credit to Darshan for recognizing up against a Rumble, a Sejuani, and even a Talia. So triple magic damage on the top side of the map from Echo Fox. He backed first item Negatron Cloak and a Rejuve bead on Jarvan. That's very abnormal in terms of the standard Jarvan build, but recognizing that the only damage that's going to come his way is magic, he built himself a very safe top lane. Very safe top lane obviously with the Talia as well you know she's going to try and roam into the side lanes you're pretty likely to receive some jungler attention as well so really smart pickup knowing that he's itemizing against the three threats that are going to be coming after him able to survive that and then after that had a great performance that intelligent game. Uh, play from top tier players. Last thing I want to discuss is that remaining, uh, you know, schedule for CLG as we talk about the mix at the top. They've got Immortals tomorrow. 
the following week, P1 and Envy, and then the final week, Dignitas and TSM. So not the easiest of schedules considering they have to play both of the teams they're tied with currently and a Dignitas that is surging. It's going to be difficult, but I think it's something that can be a huge benefit for your team if you end the regular season destroying the other top teams. It gives you a lot of confidence going into playoffs, and they look really, really good. We've seen some of these other teams struggling a lot right now. We have not yet seen Immortals on 714, but I think it's fair to say, uh, no no spoilers for the other stream, right. but well, one of the top teams is struggling a little bit. So uh, they will yeah. probably want to step it up. Yeah, you can hop on over there and check that one. Now, I, I lied. I actually have one more thing I want to talk about, and this is an Echo Fox point. This roster, Pastry brought it up going into the game as they made, you know, three swaps here into game two. He takes issue with the way in which they are, uh, you know, choosing to sub out people in that they have too many variables. How could you ever determine who is and isn't working and in what iterations if you're making this many changes on top of the fact that you're making these changes still in week seven? That's the big thing is uh, the, the records are so different between your original starting five and your backups. I think it's 10 and 11 with your starters and two Correct. and nine. With all other iterations all of the other roster. It's the same thing we were saying last night with Team Liquid, where at a certain point, it's clear who your best team is. And I don't fault them for losing a series in week two where they subbed out Acadian early on and brought in Grigne and right. those kinds of things. But at this point, you know who is your best roster. You're changing these things around, and it's getting to the point where you just have to look at it and say, like, what are you trying to get out of this? Are you trying to get them experience in week seven when you're trying to avoid promo tourney? I'm not sure. And that's the thing, right? It, it has to come down to a, a discussion around whether or not Echo Fox feels they legitimately have a chance to make playoffs, in which case they should be fielding their best roster, and or they've kind of succumbed to the idea that, fine, we're not making the playoff picture. Let's utilize the rest of the split to get these guys playoff time or play time.